What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And now, the star of Say Your Hunch, the wonderful Robert Q. Lewis. It's always fun to be able to sit between two lovely gals, Dorothy, and on my left, a brilliant star of television and Broadway, Arlene Francis. And now the distinguished but cozy president of Random House, Mr. Bennett Sir. Here's an absolute stranger to one-syllable words, <laughs> our silver-tongued <laughs> panel moderator, John Charles Daly. Well, Robert Q. Lewis, it's good to see you there on a summer's evening. I imagine you're one of the few people who can keep cool again. View of what's about to happen to you? I am trying, John, but it's awfully difficult with this August weather. Well, it's nice to have you here on the panel. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> and we have some very interesting occupations. More than that, we will have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger. And, and now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mr. X. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Uh, would you tell us where you're from? From Paris. From Paris? Yes. All right. Well, I'd like to present our panel and tell the panel at the same time that for obvious reasons, we have asked our guest to use the designation Mr. X. Why? will all come clear to you later. Now, will you join me over here? Coming from Paris, may I ask if you know how we keep score? Yes. All right. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. X is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, cozy search. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X, would we recognize your name if you would sign your real name instead of Mr. X? Yes. Uh, do you perform your services for a non-profit making organization? <laughs> no. 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 That's one down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. X, could I use your services? Yes. Uh, would I be happier as a result of them? Without doubt. Uh, is there anything creative about what you do? Yes. Do you, by any chance, have anything to do with the great French fashion industry? Yes. That would make me very happy. Uh, do you have anything to do with the House of Dior? Yes. Are you Mark Bohan? Uh, yes. <laughs> Dorothy, that's remarkable. Why and I... could he make me happy? Uh, <laughs> you know, I feel a little guilty. Did I say too much when I said that you'd be happy without doubt? No, Paris, and he looks so marvelous and chic, and it just, he reeks of chic, and it sort of came across. Well, it is, I guess, the House of Dior, certainly in terms of the, this, these United States, is, if not the best known, one of the best known houses in all of this wide world. I don't suppose it, um, since I read a good deal about how carefully these things must be protected, I don't suppose it would do much good if I were to ask you what the uh, new, next new line is going to be. Well, just give us a general opinion. 
The women want a, a very big change, do you think? No, I don't think really. You don't think they do? Well, that's the secret of the next collection. That's the secret of the next collection. John, as a long-suffering husband, I don't care what the next line looks like. I'd like to know what the next line's going to cost. <laughs> <laughs> what I would rather, what I'd rather know is, uh, like to know, is what uh, Mrs. Uh, Bennett Surf says after Bennett gets home tonight with that long-suffering <laughs> husband bit, too. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'm glad you said it, Bennett. It wasn't uh, my fault, anyway. John. Well, Yes. It's all my fault, so flip the cards and vive la France. I think that's a good idea. We'll flip all the cards for sure and thank Mr. Bohan for being a guest. I'm sorry we didn't give him a lot of time. I'll And now to meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Ann Mostyn, is that right? Is it Smith or Mrs. Mostyn? It's Smith. It's Miss Mostyn. Actually, we might as well tell them that in the year 1960, Miss Mostyn was Mich Miss Michigan in the Miss America contest. <laughs> I got it all out. <laughs> Would you tell us um, where you're from? Well, I'm from Wyandotte, of which Detroit is a suburb. You're from Wyandotte, of which Detroit is a suburb. And how long have you been in the Chamber of Commerce? Of <laughs> not, not very long so far. Miss Marston, may I present our panel? How do you do? Now, would you join me over here, please? Uh, do you know how we keep score? Yes. All right, in that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, panel, we can tell you that Miss Marston is self-employed, deals in a service, and uh, we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Robert Q. Lewis. Thank you, John. Uh, may I tell you, Miss Marston, that as an old U of M man, I am delighted to recognize Miss Michigan. Thank you. We used to say back at Ann Arbor, four out of five are beautiful and the fifth goes to Michigan. That is not true. <laughs> Miss Marston, uh, you, you deal in a service, is a service I might utilize. Yes. Uh, when you uh, do what you do, do you wear a, 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 something similar to what you have on, I would hope? No. That's one no. down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything physical about your work, Miss Marston? Yes. Do you move about on your job? Yes. Uh, do people come to... Do you instruct in any way? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Marston, would you describe the garb that you are tired, which you're tired when you're doing your job as some kind of a uniform? Well, you might say that. I would say we would we'd give you a yes answer, Bennett, but only with the understanding it's that not, uniform here covers the I whole not, area of costume. I do not mean a uniform so. of one of the United States Armed Forces. May I eliminate any uniform of the, any governmental service? Yes, you may eliminate it. Is the <laughs> uniform that you wear, does that involve wearing possibly slacks? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Then, Miss Marston, you wear a skirt? Yes. Is it uh, shorter than the skirt you're wearing now? Yes. Uh, do you ever do what you do in front of people who watch you? Yes. Are you some sort of performer? Yes. So the people pay to see you. Do you work indoors? Yes. Do you work in something other than a theater? Yes. Is it an arena? Yes. Would you ever work for a circus? No. Let's have a small conference. <laughs> oh, I knew that was going to happen. Even if I'm wrong, he's going to have a conference. <laughs> he's going to get her a job in a circus. <laughs> I think that's a little overlong, right? John. John, we're on, John. We're on the air. Oh. Well, now where were we? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. The long hot summer. The long hot summer. Now, I would say here, Dorothy, that um, Miss Marston has agreed that uh, we should give you a qualified yes, because while Miss Marston herself has not and does not, 
uh, it would not be unreasonable that this particular service might be performed in Turkey. But I did get yes on an arena. Mm -hmm. Do you work with your hands? Yes. Do you work with someone or some people as opposed to alone? Yes. Are you a member of a team? If you feel we need another conference, Miss Martin, I don't <laughs> want you to hold back. I think we should have another conference. <laughs> uh, here again, Dorothy, it's nomenclature. I don't know that uh, you would necessarily call uh, the associationship a team, but there is this element of... There is uh, a group relationship, would there you is, say? Well, we might say there is certainly an association which would lend itself to this designation if it was used very loosely. Do you ever... All right, you want to know, John? I'll give it to you now. Do you ever do your work uh, a little bit or a great deal off the ground? <laughs> now, the conference is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Just say no. It's easier that way. All right, no. No. Four down at six to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, Miss Marston, when you are uh, doing what you do, uh, is there any physical dexterity required? Yes. Uh, would you have to work out beforehand? In other words, before a performance, would you have to practice, practice a bit or, or get yourself in shape? Yes, she uh, is in shape. Oh, and boy, <laughs> believe me, you're so right. Uh, would, uh, are there both men and women in your so-called team or troupe? Yes. Uh, is there any, uh, any balancing involved in what you do? No. No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Would what you do ever be considered a sport? Yes. Um, is, it a, is it a sport that does not require bats and balls? It does not. Yes, it does, it does not, not yes. require <laughs> bats and balls. Do you, however, uh, wear something that would make you immediately identifiable in your profession? Yes. Is it on your feet? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Marston, uh, do you ever do your performance in or near the water? Mm, it has no relationship to water, Benedetto. No relationship so. to water? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. I just struck out. Yeah. Um, you do it uh, on dry land, not near the water. Unless it's been raining. <laughs> Well, she does it indoors in an arena, for heaven's sake. Maybe as a vehicle. What do you do in the arena? All right. Um, this um, team or troop or group of yours that has both men and women, uh, does it ever dance? No. <laughs> Eight down and two to go. I'm going to give you one more minute. Am I safe in assuming that uh, this sport in which you are uh, employed is, is one that both men and women do together? Yes. Is it unusual? It is not unusual then to see both men and women uh, uh, competing in this sport. No. Uh, yes, it is not. <laughs> and we've determined that there are no bats or balls involved. Is there any possibility of any other equipment being used in this sport? Yes. There is other equipment. Yes. Oh boy, what kind of sport do you have? <laughs> um, do you? Uh, oh no. Is, uh, there, is there a referee in this sport? No. <laughs> Mind down and watch it go, Miss Francis. Yeah. yeah. Can we can we rule out uh, animals? There are no animals involved in what you do, right? Now so we've only got a skirt on. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any form of transportation in the involved in the sport? No. Ten down and no more. This not a, tennis, is it? It's not no. tennis. No, it's a very Never tough was. one. Actually, I didn't expect that you'd get it. I don't because I line. believe that Miss Marston is the only professional in this field, the only person who, of her sex, who earns a living in this field. She works with her dad. She's a professional archer. Oh. And I know that one of her specialties is a shot. Uh, uh, what do you call it? A shot? Yes, uh-huh. 240 feet? 
Yes. And what do you do with this? Arch it into a target? Well, I perform at rodeos, and I shoot from, uh, on horseback, and I have uh, skated and shot with uh, ice skating shows, and I appear at rodeos, and I also appear at sports shows, and uh, that is my feature shot in well, different kinds of indoor and outdoor uh, sports. Wonderful. You're the best-looking Cupid we've had on the show in a long time. <laughs> Thank you. I <laughs> like the bullseye on that one, didn't you? <laughs> Are you very good? Oh, wow, well, that's a tough question, isn't it? If I say, uh, if you say I, yes, if I'll I ask say you yes, you'll think I'm conceited. Oh, no, no. If I say no, I won't good. have any bookings at all for next was year. It, <laughs> was, this, was this your specialty when you were appearing in the Miss America contest? Yes, I won the yeah, talent won on that. Won the talent on that, and her dad trained her, with whom she now works. And the reason I asked you if you were very good is I thought if you'd say yes, I'd ask you if you'd like to shoot a pea off. Uh, Bennett serves head. Well, all right, and if I miss, he can keep the arrow. Oh, he can keep the arrow if you miss. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Miss Marston. Nice to have you with us. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel, as you know, is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, panel, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. <clears throat> have you made a name for yourself in the picture industry? No, I have not. Not in the picture industry, no. Can, what is that? Not in the picture industry. No, well, I, I would change the answer. I would say that our guest has made part of his reputation in, in the uh, picture industry. Mr. Sir. Oh, he's shy. In the course of your professional life, have you ever raised that mellifluent voice of yours in song? Sometimes I have sung a song, but not with their approval. <laughs> but not with their approval. Miss Kilgallen? Uh, have you ever been a professional musician? No, I have not. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. Have you, sir, ever appeared in a musical on Broadway? No, I have not. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Since your demeanor is so serious, is it possible that you may be a comedian? <laughs> it is possible that I am sometimes a comedian, yes. Mr. Sometimes. Mr. Sir? Have you ever appeared as a member of the, this panel on What's My Line? Yes, sometimes I have. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Are you Joey Bishop? <laughs> yeah! Oh, boy! It's a great actor. Wow. <laughs> no need for it, Joey. That was very well done. I could have driven a cab tonight and made more money. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, it's wonderful to see you here. Thank you. I'm afraid that uh, our memory of you on the panel is always so good and warm that we couldn't get away with very much tonight. Well, uh, I think the last time I was on, uh, both uh, Dorothy and Bennett, and of course Robert wasn't here, and Arlene just quickly guessed it. That no. time I think but I was... But this disguise was wonderful. It was marvelous. It was very great. Really Excellent. Marvelous. He sounded like... like a Shakespearean actor. Well, and a bit like Charles Boyer, I thought. I've... Well, that's what I thought, and then I thought it was Rex Harrison imitating Charles Boyer. <laughs> imitating Joey Bishop. That. Actually, it was me imitating Rex Harrison in the <laughs> That's what gave you away, Joey. Yeah. Well, I must say it's good to have you here, Joey, and I think one of the nice things about the uh, coming television season, which is nearly upon us, is that the Joey Bishop show is going to be there on Saturday nights again. Well, I'll thank you. That other you. nameless network, NBC. <laughs> We are a close-knit family, and we consider Joey as part of it, and your success pleasures us mightily. Well, it's, it's always a pleasure to be sitting over there uh, with the other members, because it's always a lot of laughs here, John, and uh, it's nice to be the mystery guest once in a while. I appreciate that, too. Good to have you with us. Thank you very much, and I also want to thank this uh, intelligent panel for 
taking one of my few personal appearances and cutting it down to nothing. <laughs> I have to agree that you've done very well so far tonight, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now to meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Yolanda Ostrowski, is that right? Is it, uh, Miss or Mrs. Estrella? Mrs. Mrs. Where are you from, Mrs. Estrella? Clifton, New Jersey. Clifton, New Jersey. Practically a neighbor. Mrs. Ostrowski, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? Yes. Fine. Then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss Ostrowski is salaried and deals in a service. It would be fair to say that there is a product connected with the service, but it's basically a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, could I use your product? Yes. Could I hold it in my hand? Yes. Is it useful rather than a luxury product? Yes. Would you say that one of these could be found in the majority of homes in America? I would say it's fair to assume that at one time or another the general product could be found in most American homes, yes. Is it solid rather than liquid? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. Uh, it's a liquid product from Clifton, New Jersey. <laughs> Is there any possibility that this might be uh, imbibed or, as we say, drunk? And... <laughs> no. Two no. down and eight to go, Miss Preston. It is a liquid that is used on something rather than ourselves. Three down oh, and seven to go, Mr. Sir. We are underlings. Mrs. Ostrowski, might this product be used to cleanse or beautify even so beautiful a duo as Miss Francis <laughs> and Miss Kilgallen? Well, I think we would agree that one of the end results that might be hoped for is that uh -huh. both of them would have a uh, sense of... Um, Shall we say, uh, yes, wouldn't you? Yes, yes I think so, too. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, usefulness of this product more connected with something else than its fragrance? Yes. Uh, is it applied to the face of this product? Yes. Is it applied uh, above the mouth? Yes. Is it applied on the hair? Mm, no. no. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Mrs. Ostrowski, would a man be able to use this product too? Yes. Would that be usual? Yes. Would it be used in the area of the eyes? In the area of the eyes? Yes, I yes. think. So. Hmm. Would it help him to see? Would no. it help him to see? No. no. At five down and five to go. We're running out of time. A nose spray. I, it must a nose. no. A nose spray, no. Bennett? No. That's ten. John, it's got to be an eyelash cleaner. It's got to be an eyelash cleaner, Bob, and you're absolutely wrong. That's very good. <laughs> because actually what Miss Ostrowski does is to test suntan lotion. Uh -huh. Actually, uh her particular one is bronze tan, which is Shilton, Shilton Incorporated, I think, but bronze tan, which a lot of people use, and I guess would be it, or one like it would be in many, many American homes. Thank you very much, ma'am. Nice to have you on What's My Lines. <laughs> Once again, glad to have you with us, Robert, and good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Robert. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Arlene. Good night. Good night, Bennett. Got for those bows and arrows, John. <laughs> Good night. And conferences. Listen, Cozy. Take it easy. <laughs> I've got a few things on you. And thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Tuck. Johnny Olsen speaking. The preceding program.
program was pre-recorded.